I consider music theory to be in the same essence of editing. It's a lot of things that happen in order to make the end user not necessarily notice it. The concept that the evolution of technology has evolved the way that people create music and the way that you're able to use different things mm -hmm. to make music. I remember listening to these songs in high school, still figuring out my life, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and these songs calmed me down. Now I'm 30, I have a family now, I, I have a job and a career, and I have kids, and I listened to this playlist and I felt really nostalgic. I'm like, damn. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Uneducation St -st Station. I'm here with Zach. Hello. Once again, and we are the backyard again. I'm not going to do that again, <laughs> by the way. That was a funny bit. It was a funny <laughs> bit. So I'm going to say we're the backyard again and not say this song so as to essentially blue balls you to want to sing the song or, or want the, me to sing the song, but I'm not going to. Then there, and then Zach does it too because he's a pussy. I'm joking. I'm joking. Einstein's was better. That's a lie, actually. Brack Yardigans was goaded. Bro, kids' shows in like the late 2000s were like the goat. Remember Oswald? I do remember Oswald. That was the octopus guy. I loved Oswald. I think I watched Oswald. I, interestingly enough, I think I watched it the most. If I think, but I think it uh, stopped airing. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I had watched it like all the time. That was one of my favorites. Oswald and Blue's Clues. Bro, Blue's Clues was. And Diego. Best. Go, Diego, go. Because I didn't watch Dora, Zach. I watched Dora for like in, in the equivalent of my lifetime, mm -hmm. probably like 10 minutes. And then it was just like I moved on to better <laughs> things. <laughs> better things. I'm tired of this little shit. No, I don't. It, <laughs> bro she's so stupid <laughs> I don't know why Go Diego Go just fastened to me more because it was more like kind of jungly there was more cool creatures and stuff you know he had a jaguar Zach that's so cool come on bro that's pretty cool <laughs> Diego was the favorite child <laughs> <laughs> can't, I can't say click take a pic Zach what did Dora say Zach hey map no, do map. you know where the bridge is? <laughs> <laughs> then again, I guess Diego did that too, but his was cooler, Zach. Just because he was, he, you know, the, the animals were different, Zach, you know? Plot twist, Diego was in the Mexican cartel. <laughs> Zach, I live in America. I've seen a hippo, Zach. I've seen, I've seen dogs, Zach. I've seen, I've seen uh, eagles and birds, Zach. I've seen those, Zach. I haven't seen a damn jaguar. I've never, I've, I haven't seen those, Zach. Giraffes. You just said you've been to the zoo. Did I say that? Yeah. I've been to the zoo twice. One time I don't remember. The second time I also don't remember. And the third time, I, I lied. I said three times. <laughs> for the field trip that we went to in, uh, in uh, middle school. Did we really do a field trip to the zoo? Mm -hmm. I have no recollection of that whatsoever. You don't? No. I mean, I don't either, but I remember doing it. I remember there was an electric fence and I was told not to touch it. I didn't touch it, but I really wanted to. But I was raised as an obedient kid, so I didn't do it. <laughs> Bro, the the second you're told not to do something, that just makes you want to do it even more. Yeah. And even if it's the most stupid shit, like, hey. Well, I'm glad I didn't touch that fence, Zach. <laughs> If it's meant to keep like giraffes and shit away from you, I mean, it's probably not good for your health. Yeah. I don't think it actually was an electric fence. There was just a warning. And I think they just, I mean, I shouldn't touch it anyways, regardless. I think he's just barbed. But, you know, he was like, Arthur, don't touch that. And then I, uh, me as a, as a badass, I stuck my chest out. I'm like, okay, understandable. I won't do that anymore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me being a bad motherfucker. I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Zach, what's new with you? nothing nothing good because my me neither my day you know me zach nothing happens in my life unless i choose for it to happen of which it doesn't um i went to a baby shower and then i remembered i don't remember how baby showers work and then i went there and i was like oh this is how baby showers go and i didn't get a present because i was like do i give baby shower do i give presents but apparently you do like diapers and at, such. at that point it's like well, i knew you did but i was like do I? But I should I should not. But my mom, my mom got diapers and stuff. And I and I, you know, I can imagine, you know, as a parent, the last thing you want to do is worry about going out of your way to buy more diapers. Right. So I can assume, even if it's just a shit ton of diapers, that'd be pretty baller, you know. 
Yeah. Um, but I don't know. But then the, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, what else? We're gonna more keyboard and stuff. I built this keyboard. This is fun. Uh-huh. You know, I'll be in the keyboards. Y'all know me. Built this for my buddy V. Um, and I have another keyboard co- uh, commission very soon. So that's a lot of fun. Dude, you're getting commissioned to build keyboards. That's kind of dope. It's going to be a lot of fun. Way more easier than being commissioned to build a computer. I right. Say. Yeah. And and after after all of this, I'm still like... You know, I really want to mess with that, <laughs> Zach. Like, really badly. But I don't know how I would go about it. Honestly, at this point, I think your keyboard arsenal is substantial enough to the point where... We'll have like, more keyboards coming in. So eventually that will just get replaced altogether. Yeah. To my understanding. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot of consequence yeah, to just kind of like fucking around with it. But it would be cool though. Imagine I make a sound. I don't know. It was clicky. And it's like, eh. But I don't really mind. The, uh, I don't know. I was, I, the novelty of the clicky wore off very fast, obviously. Bro, I got and, so sick of it. Yeah. It's fun for like the first two days, I would say. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, this is a bit, this is a bit much, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I go back and look at old VODs because um, when I was streaming a lot, I used this keyboard. Yeah. You know, it wasn't and that bad, honestly. I think I told you I was surprised at how not that bad it was. I don't know what happened. Like, yeah, I don't, you, you had the same. We both had an AT2020. Yeah. I ran effects like a compress. I think you had a compression, a compression too, just on OBS and such. Maybe. I think or the maybe only effects that I had was like a limiter and maybe compression but it wasn't a ton it wasn't a ton i mean i use a lot of compression so maybe it brought up the lower sounds maybe but yeah whenever i use it it was just a nightmare whenever i had my red my red switch keyboard that my road clips that i gave to uh, uh i was gonna say cameron the hell um to jackson yeah 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 and somehow it just worked i don't know good but- for you zach good for you. <laughs> I I just had to deal with it, Zach. <laughs> dude. I, I think I think the funniest part is going back and and watching like when I first started streaming with that really shitty toner mic, mm-hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure I was using a webcam that I got from my buddy Alec, mm-hmm. and like my microphone was just really fucking far away, and it was it was like directly over my keyboard too, so you could yeah. just yeah yeah. Classic rookie mistake. It was the worst. We're better now. You're, we're we're <laughs> at a better place, Zach. You're at a better place. Yeah. You, you're doing this, Zach. Bro. You're I, doing this. I uh, I run it through a mixer now. I know, right? And so it's like, it's so funny because you- Mixers are pretty cool. You bought this mixer for Uned. Mm-hmm. I know, breaking the fourth wall a little bit, but- yeah. Yamaha MG 10X. 1X? 10X. 10X. 10X U. U. Yeah. You, bam. Soldier Boy Tello. (laughs) (laughs) Copyright. (laughs) 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 We saw the same one. That's fantastic. I love that so much. That's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. How perfect! Okay, how perfect that cut is is so beautiful. Like it's actually so perfect. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how there's a audio bite of the of that, but with without the instrumental. I mean, I guess it's such, it's such a it's such a hard boiled meme at this point that I'm sure someone just some audio engineer just like I'm gonna just remove that I mean, so it can live on as a powerful meme. <laughs> Actually, you'd be surprised that it's not that hard to isolate vocals. Um, mm. It's a lot easier to isolate vocals than it is to to like take vocals away. Mm. And I learned that because I've been trying to do like covers and shit of songs. Mm. And I've been trying to find good instrumentals and there's none out there for this one song in particular that I want to do. Ah. And so I've tried to do it on my own and it's been really hard. And then I've accidentally isolated the vocals and it sounded killer. And so <laughs> I was just like, oh, OK, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I didn't actually know that. I thought it would be the other way around, but I guess that makes sense. In it's in all, my head, it's all uh, frequencies and waveforms. That's true. That's true. Have I showed you the video of uh, "To Become Vocaloid"? Or have I told you about it? No, I don't think so. So there's this YouTuber. <clears throat> I think his name is Jerfonico. 
I could be wrong. I all despite me binging like a bunch of his videos because they're fast, they're fascinating. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Jeff Farnico. Kind of like a weebish, not quite. No, actually, honestly, not not quite. Um, it, it's very fascinating because he does this kind of deadpan, dead like a uh, dry humor type of thing, mm. which is I love that shit. First of all, um, and then it's kind of he just does basically video essays, but not quite. But I mean, the, like it's a the this how to how to or to become vocal in videos like thirty minutes of him like, breaking down the the history of. Uh, voice synthesis, uh, voice synthesis, uh, synthesization. Yeah, like how and and how music works, breaking it into frequency, and how and how explaining music is math. Mm-hmm. And he and it's like it's fascinating. And even though you don't really listen to the robot girls, Zach, you should watch the video because his presentation is phenomenal. And I think to this day is probably one of my favorite comedic edits of all time. Bro, I love. When people are able to take like the most mundane ideas mm-hmm. and just turn it into the funniest shit, like well, you would think like you would think it's not that like like voice and like you just add the voice and it's just you know the synthesization, but music is math, pitches are decimals, mm-hmm. and you can graph it. And he's like he's like a coder and stuff, and he does mess with all this type of things, and he's just like. And he breaks it down in these different in, into formulas and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. This is fascinating. I don't really, I mean, I don't, I'm obviously, this is a bunch of, not necessarily jargon, but it, he goes extremely fast, more for comedic purposes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of understand, but not really. But it, the way he presents it is just beautiful. Dude, there's a, there's a really cool video that I found. I think it was just kind of like floating around in, in the musician space, his battery's dying. Um, it was it was basically how to read sheet music by someone who doesn't know how to read sheet music or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was talking about like a whole bunch of different um, like basic ah uh, what what sword that I'm looking for mm-hmm. basic uh, music theory. Mm-hmm. And so that ended up turning into him making like a 256 note or uh-huh. like a uh demi semi hemi demi semi hemi demi semi quaver oh my because there's there's like a quaver which is uh-huh. a quarter note semi quaver eighth note uh demi semi demi quaver mm-hmm. and so on and so forth mm-hmm. and it just goes on for fucking ever so the point of this video right <clears throat> the point of this video is more so just the idea of voice at the station is fascinating because right. while it does it is you know to this day with our understanding of it thank you car is um uh, anime robot anime girls singing right yeah all right first of all look listen you know this is it's not you can see it's not just that <laughs> but you know you have to think about it right a lot of consideration of understanding i mean can i speak right now zach and then play what i'm speaking on the piano no no you can't right i'm speaking on a frequency right right now they've they've made pianos that can talk exactly and then he goes into that which is fascinating so the point of it is just that how what the first the first histories of voice synthesization um the first types of or, or and how you need to have a good understanding of the way language works the way talking works the way we make sounds out of our brains and our mouths and our you know or other orifices perhaps and then create yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just it's awesome you should watch this video zach even if you don't listen to the robot dance girls zach it's, Bro, it's fantastic i will link you it because I, <laughs> you go it's, it's 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 actually hilarious as you as you saw but you know it it I love how we're going to tie two of my favorite things together, music and tech, because... And anime, technically. This is it, Zach. This is this is the ending episode. <laughs> the magnum this opus. Is- <laughs> <laughs> it's the last one, Zach. We're tearing down after this. <laughs> what are you going to do with the cameras? Uh, but... <laughs> I'm keeping them. <laughs> it, 
the the concept that the evolution of technology has also evolved the way that people create music and the way that you're able to use different things mm -hmm. to make music mm -hmm. like voices and being able to use your voice as an instrument in an analog sense and in a digital sense as well mm -hmm. because you know um i've seen people who use uh Oh gosh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a tube you put in your mouth and oh, then you enunciate yeah, yeah. words mm -hmm. as you're playing the keys and it sounds Yeah, that's really cool. That's like 80s, 90s. It's a talk box. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, Very cool. It's super cool. And I want one so bad, but I would need to buy a new keyboard that has like a little whammy pedal mm -hmm. or like a little whammy bar type thing. Right. Be you mean like the uh, the pitch uh pitch shifting the, the, Yeah, the pitch shifty thingy. The, yeah. Not quite a dial, but a more of a uh, wheel, wheel, wheel. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one of those. Yep, everybody knows what we're talking about. Yep, one of those. Yeah, so basically, to be fair, I don't know. I don't know how I would describe it. <laughs> it's kind of a wheel. Yeah, um, and there's some that are just like a like a little stick thing. Oh, is it actually like a whammy? Yeah, it's pretty similar. Oh, I thought it was just a, like one on the side, you know, like the like the little wheels that you would pitch up and down. It's the same thing. It just looks different. Mm. Basically, it's just a stick. <laughs> it's just a stick. Um. But yeah, it, it's really cool to see people creating music in a very, very unique way. Right. And like, you know, you were talking about how he uses math to break down like uh, vocoding and those types of things. Mm -hmm. But have you heard of like, oh God, what is it called? It's like math rock or something like that. Math rock. No, I, math do, not, metal. I do not think I have. No. Um. So it's basically people writing songs in ridiculous time signatures and like mm -hmm. it's just constantly fluctuating and changing. Mm. Um, and it's super insane. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of an example that you might know. Um, like uh, I probably maybe go ahead. I mean, Dream Theater is a good example of of that kind of concept of like constant fluctuation of time signatures mm -hmm. using like really weird compound meter that kind of stuff mm -hmm. compound meter by the way is just combining two si time signatures together and and just like time signatures meaning um you know one two three four one two three four okay all right one, all two, right three, hang on. i'm gonna one, two, three i'm gonna, I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirty. Why did you go from 11 to 13? Anyway, so um, I kind of want to go a little bit into like music stuff. Because, sure. Because it all ties, <laughs> it ties together to the to the singing, dancing robot anime girl sack. It does. It does. Anime is math. <laughs> and math is music. No, anime is music. Music is math. Math is life. <laughs> 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 okay we are math professors today <laughs> if you are a music if you if you're a music theory professional you're also a math math profession Matician. Ma i was looking for that word Zach. I was looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> calculus by the way ap english too by the way <laughs> uh so <laughs> ap english too <laughs> <laughs> honors english too that's what i meant to say but it just kind of came out of my face okay. wrong um, it's not ap you would get mad because they would get the the english people would get mad because it's the honors english too isn't a college level class how dare you i forget who asked anyways ooh, ooh, ooh. plus l plus ratio <laughs> got him <laughs> so basically time signature it's it's a it's a decimal so like say four over four so it's a fraction it's a fraction <laughs> uh math so basically what the top number is is how many beats per measure and the bottom number is what note gets the beat right so in four four the quarter note which is one beat mm -hmm. which is a quarter of the entire measure Hence quarter note. Hence quarter note. So four, four, one, two, three, four, and then you can break it up into one and two and three and four and or one and a two and a three and a four and a or one and a two and a three and oh. a four and a but um or math uh and it's really cool because like <laughs> I've I've seen people who will take like four four mm. and then break it down even further to the feel of 
each beat. So you could go four four and then have like a triplet feel of sure. each beat. You could kind of syncopate and then kind of have a little fun with that. And that's why, okay, bef- before we start throwing words around, you know, <laughs> um, music theory, as fun as it is, I haven't really jumped into it necessarily in the sense right. that you have because you took a class for it. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but because I understand what it's supposed to do mm-hmm. and what it's for, it helps me enjoy music in a different way, right? Right. And but I consider music theory to be in the same essence of editing in the way that it's a lot of things that happen in order to make the end user not necessarily notice it. That's a great way to describe it, right? Because that that's exactly right because mm-hmm. you you take music and you just listen to it. Right. Um you know, like, uh, let's say, for example, I don't know, uh, Let It Be by the Beatles, right? Okay. So you listen to it and you're like, oh my God, it's so pretty. And then you break it down a layer and then you look at the lyrics and see what mm-hmm. the lyrics are saying. Break it down another layer, look at like the chords and everything like mm-hmm. that. And then break it down even further than that. Looking at the key center, which it's in the key of C, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's a... uh oh gosh is it a one so is it really c yeah so in the key of c so they use like roman numerals to write down what note in the key the chord is or like the root of the chord so for example in the key of c uh e an e major is a three Three. chord yeah um and then so on and so forth and so i think it's like a a one five six one well a better way to explain it would be if it's if you start in c c would be one yeah d would be two e would be three yeah so on and so forth <clears throat> break it down even further than that then you start talking about like cadences and a bunch yeah. of like really classical mumbo jumbo jargon yeah. and all that kind of yeah. shit yeah and then the italian words that he said you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> those are more accents and dynamics but yeah um but yeah you know like the more that you break it down, that doesn't mean that it loses value in any way. Yeah. And I would also say the more you br- and I would also argue the um, the opposite, where uh, if you don't break it down, then you don't in- appreciate it. I mean, that's that's I feel like that's an entirely different conversation. I suppose. So, like, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You know, the the idea that ignorance is bliss when it comes to certain very complicated things that seem really simple, Mm -hmm. you know, like there's there's some beauty in that. But also, you know, if you don't understand how why it's as cool as it is, then you'll never understand why it's so cool. Right. Um, But yeah, in the sense of music, it's like, you know, I know a lot of people who aren't musicians who listen to the same type of weird shit that i listen to and it's right. just like hell yeah dude we listen to it for two entirely different reasons but you <laughs> like music so that's cool mm-hmm. um and so this was honestly just an excuse for me to go on another music rant in case it has been talk. a while zach it, it has this is one of the topics that we really haven't talked about for honestly a while. you're you're right not 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 at least the hardcore stuff it yeah. has been a little bit yeah and the more that I learn about music, it's okay. Okay. Here's a, here's a good way to think about mm-hmm. it. So the more that you learn about music, you just start to appreciate different things about it. Yes. And so I could be listening to the same song as Joe Schmo number 479. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And Joe Schmo, he, he, might like it because it's like oh it has strings it's so pretty and everything like that Mm -hmm. um and then i would listen to like the the voicings of the strings right like you know the the violin having the melody and then having like a counter melody and like all of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. like that's why i might like that song but that doesn't mean that I like it more than he does, or my opinion is more important than theirs. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find a YouTuber really quick, so keep going. It's okay. Um, But, you know, it it really just kind of boils down to an appreciation for music, regardless of what it's for. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I 
try to teach people about music theory and all that kind of stuff is because, you know, if, if you're curious and you want to know the why for things, then, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to be a resource for that. And like, you know, I'm, I'm one of my neighbors, uh, her kids are wanting to learn piano. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me if I would do piano lessons for them and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course I agreed cause I would love to. Yeah, of course. Um, and so it's, it's just, you know, sharing my appreciation for music f with as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think the, it's more so, well, not more so rather that is also a part of it, of course, and there's a large part of it, but it's, it's the sharing part. It's the wanting to tell people of your hobbies but also to teach some of your hobbies. Yeah. It's why I enjoy telling people about tech and stuff. Because, yeah. And especially if it's not necessarily a hobby. Well, it's still a hobby, but it's something that is something we all experience already. Yeah. But there's more to it and you get to explain why there's more to it. For example, computers. I get to explain how the different components work in a digestible way, of course. Yeah. To which they can leave knowing more and not necessarily being information overloaded, of course, because I wouldn't do that. But it, it, it's easy to do that when you're in that mode of like, they know you're, they, they are interested in a hobby. They come to ask you for it and you're like, oh, dude, yeah. dude, I got yeah. you, dude, dude. <laughs> now, here, let me, let me, here, let me break it down for you. But okay, nah. <laughs> you have to be careful of that. But, yeah. you know, when you have, let's say even a niche, you know, a niche hobby, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really, you don't get to talk to many people, maybe like on online forums, if people still do forums, you know, Twitter and stuff and facebook groups and such you know and you kind of have that that interaction with your group and then you meet someone in real life who has that same um the same uh, uh hobby yeah somehow some way like it's fate or some shit yeah and you're and that's just like whoa and you're gonna talk about it and stuff and and you know maybe whether you let's say in this instance it would be you know more than them they're interested in your hobby yeah, you know, you want to let them know. You want to share your knowledge, and uh, you have a and you have a good time because you're not you're not only teaching someone, but you also finally get to talk openly about this this hobby that you've have been having for days, weeks, months, years, right, decades. But dare I say, you know, centuries? No, <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> you have that that really not really sorry uh, wrong adjective at um you have that want and that need to teach and that's why i enjoy doing those editing streams i did back then because mm -hmm. i've been doing it for so long and i do get to talk with a lot of people but when i stream it and i get to teach other people um i enjoy that a lot and it's a lot of fun even if i am talking out of my ass but you know sometimes yeah. um talking out of my ass seems to be the correct thing so you know <laughs> yeah and i mean on the other side of that as well you know, there's there's just that curiosity. Mm -hmm. And let's say, for example, your hobby is like stamp collecting or something like that, where you're collecting something that may seem very mundane, but it has a lot of value to it. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, being able to learn and understand why those things are valuable, what mm -hmm. makes them special, what yeah. why, you know, why people collect stamps or coins or anything like that, yeah. you know, like. I've been scrolling on TikTok. Sorry, I keep hitting my mic. I'm a bad He's streamer. Losing it. He used to be really good at that. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> um, it's because this has become my gesturing hand and this has become my change scenes hand. Well, maybe you should yeah, swap. Yeah, good idea. Um, so my... I'm oh, I was, just, I'm oh, waiting for you to still hit the mic. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just scrolling on tiktok yes. and i saw a video of a guy who opened up a roll of coins and was just kind of going through them and and explaining along the way like why what coins he's looking for what makes them valuable you mm -hmm. know like after a certain period of time they weren't made out of pure silver and like mm -hmm. all of this kind of stuff and it just made me super interested and then you know i obviously didn't really go into it too much but just having an understanding of of why people enjoy it so much and what's so fulfilling about it um, I think that that's kind of what makes me want to learn a lot about other people's hobbies as well. Sure. I mean, why did you, why do you think, how do you think I felt when I found out more people are watching anime, you know? And yeah. you know what I mean? I got to bring anime in the conversation, Zach, so we can have that, that trifecta. Yeah. Tech, music, and anime. 
It's on our cover, Art Zach. And we never talk. We never talk about more than two of them. I'm talking about all three of them, Zach. Again, yeah. this is the final episode. Magnum Opus. <laughs> <laughs> or even within that anime culture, I never understood why people collected figures. I know, right? Ironic, you think. Mm-hmm. But there was a point in time where I was like, why would people do that? I mean, I get it. I mean, I, do I? I don't know. I mean, I love my anime and I love my waifus, but how do I care enough to obtain memorabilia of them? Right. You know? Or like even shirts or something or anything like well, I mean shirts I can kind of understand, but mm-hmm. you know, like figures and 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 uh posters and stuff. I'm like, I don't know, you know. And then I bought my first one. I'm like, okay, I this is kind of fun. It's kind of cool, you know. It's just a knickknack and not necessarily for collect or not necessarily for like um resale value or collect. I mean, I guess you could and just after some time, but um it's just it just sits there. It sits on my shelf, sits here or around the way and yeah. You know, that's it. And so I didn't understand that. So I got one for my for my top one girl, of course, back in the day. Um, and I was like, OK, this is kind of fun. You know, yeah. I, I kind of get it. I kind of dig it. This is kind of fun. OK, OK. And I buy, I buy a couple more as time goes on and then I get it. You know, I, yeah. I kind of I start to understand. And that's yeah, it's that kind of morbid curiosity that and that open mindedness of, you know, even though I was a weeb. I'd still, okay, trash is not the right word, but I would say, okay, I wouldn't be so, I would not be such a degenerate to start owning figures of these 2D girls. I would not, and then I became that degenerate (laughs) and it got even worse. No, (laughs) (laughs) but I was, I, I joke when I say that, I think the the term degeneracy is more of a a joke term, kind of like just saying weeb, you know, Um, but I was like, yeah, I'm not real. You know, that's not, you know, I don't know. No, that's a bit too much for me. And then I did it and then I kind of understood, right? I kind of understood the value of having, yeah, this cute anime girl with, you know, who may or may not be wearing pants. Um, the the value of the world may never know. The world may never know. Well, I'll know. Um, the value of <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> who this girl is, the show she came from, how I felt about the show, how I felt about her in the show, how I felt about her character, how I felt about her writing and her story, how I cared about how she was voiced. Who she who she voiced, what she meant to the characters, and how well she was performed. Yeah, and what she meant to me. This is, and you know, it's uh, it's more okay. I'm it's I'm not falling over the edge of me being super like psychotic. I hope there's um, a difference between like being obsessive and and just being oh yeah. No, I haven't even finished her show. Like, <laughs> calm down now. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I mean, especially. Yeah, I know, in, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, there's a difference between like having an appreciation for, you know, the character, the way that they were drawn and and voice acted, and like you know maybe the seiyu who did her character, mm-hmm. you know, and then and then you just kind of go down a different rabbit hole of like this this seiyu is like fucking amazing. And I, yep, I knew you were gonna bring it out. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Yo, you wait, Zach. You um, wait. So teaser. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's a difference between that and being like, you know, having having all rem figure posters just right. all over the place and and just. I do get that though. Yeah, hey, I, come mean, on now. <laughs> I mean, come on now, come on now, come you on. know, <laughs> you know, but like it, it's a distinct difference mm-hmm. and like you know you can you can have an appreciation for a lot of different things that doesn't make you like obsessed obsessive with it. right yeah um and you know it's like i never thought that i'd be wearing anime merch or anything right, right. like that and then i just acquired a demon slayer shirt and now i wear yeah. it all the time and you, you know. have this feeling for demon slayer and yeah and, and now you have a shirt to, i hit my mic god damn it and then you you have you never had you never understood that yeah but now you do so there's this kind of this this I was gonna say this funness yeah great word fondness fondness funness Zach funness fun funness yeah I of mean this, of this new hobby that you not well not hobby necessarily but this new enlightenment of what of something you didn't understand before yeah yeah and. Like, you know, you bought me the Shuvi figure from yes. No Game No Life, which she still this isn't the one well, that that's I that's an have. Android and I got you the, the a figure figure. Yeah. But this this figure is cool because it's been around since the very first episode of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Just gotta say that. Mm-hmm. Like, woo. But you know, you you 
kind of held my hand through the the <laughs> going through the the motions of right, like right. watching anime and then getting figures and then mm -hmm. you know getting shirts and shit and right right you know it's just a whole lot of fun well, and to it, be fair all i did was show you yeah you proceeded you know yeah but that was just more of the curiosity and the and the interest into a different into something you don't know about you know yeah i'll bring this up really quick oh yeah yeah i forgot yo da yo the I am I'm into VTuber Zach. Have I told you that? I think we know that. I think we I think we all know that. Okay, cool. In my space, and I'm talking about the not talking about the website, but in my area of the VTuber anime community. I think inherently, if you watch anime, you're you understand you understand the concept of VTubers. Whether you whether you watch them or not is up to you. Yeah. Um and it's that same idea, right? Of that these are, I mean, for anyone, right? Not even just VTubers, of, of YouTubers or Twitch streamers that you watch and you love. And this idea of wanting to, I think it's off. Or maybe it's not. You want to turn it off? I it it's on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm listening. Continue. Okay. So there's this idea of wanting to support. Um, and, and then, you know, you can get nice and you can go obsessive, right? And then you can say, I own everything and I, I want I want to meet them and, you know, that type of thing where, yeah, I think all of us can agree it goes a little bit too overboard. But, you know, I can understand where they're coming from. But the point I'm trying to make is that they're a creator that you support, that you want to watch more of and you love and you enjoy their content and you want to support them, whether that be from, their, from subscribing to them, uh, from, you know, from or following them or subscribing to them payment wise, um, doing their membership, uh, obtaining their merchandise. And it's something that you can look back on and be proud of. And you, and you walk the streets, bro, Zach, I got it. So I was, uh, tangent I tangent time, tangent time. No, not quite, <laughs> but kind of, um, I was at work and a this is a long time ago. And so the VTuber I watch, I, uh, not Kitty I me. She had, she dropped a sweatshirt, a hoodie and it's fire. It's like actually fire. Like, even if you don't watch VTubers, it's like a sick ass hoodie. And it's like really big too. And it's like, it's like some like cool shit, right? And I was at work and I saw across the way someone in GameStop or something and he was wearing that hoodie. And I was like, no fucking shit. No way. We're in Vancouver. No way there's another person who watches VTubers. That's impossible. <laughs> no, absolutely zero way. But no, he had, he had a hoodie. And I was like, that's fire. Because this is like, like a like a this was a drop you know yeah like this was limited edition hoodie type oh shit. hell yeah 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 so i'm looking over the way i'm like no shit no way please come over here he doesn't and i'm sad because i i wanted to at least say hi and 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 and, and acknowledge the hoodie but then zach a, a, a last month or this month it's still march it might be april by the time you watch this he comes back. Fucked. He comes back. He comes back. And he, this time he comes to my store. And I'm like, let's go. And I have a quick chat. I mean, there's customers. So I have to, you know, I had to deal with them quickly and then continue, you know. Yeah. But I acknowledge the hoodie. We have a go. That's cool. And then, and then you know, and then and then I, I do his thing. And then I see him again after I hand him his order. And then we talk just briefly again. And that was it. And it was fantastic, Zach. Okay. So this reminds me of a time where... So I watch a lot of gaming YouTubers yes. like Vanoss Gaming mm -hmm. and like those dudes. Um, and mm -hmm. back in like 20, oh gosh, 2015, mm -hmm. I bought a Vanoss limited edition hoodie. Oh, the, the gold one? Yeah. Yeah. The, dude, they're fucking fire. Mm -hmm. I still have it. It doesn't fit me anymore, but I still have it. Enlarge uh, that bitch, Zach. <laughs> Gotta enlarge. <laughs> Enhance. Um. But yeah, I wore to bust out the sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. So I I ended up wearing it to school one day, and mm -hmm. I ended up getting stopped by like four different people. Mm -hmm. And this was like my freshman year of high school. You know, like yeah. I had no idea what the hell I was doing with my life, and they were just like, "Oh, bro, you you got the limited edition hoodie? That's fucking <laughs> sick." Yeah, you know, and like 
of course, Jackson's one of my buddies and, you know, I talk to him all the time mm-hmm. and he bought like um, some Vanoss limited joggers and like all of that kind of mm-hmm. shit. Like he went all out yeah, um, yeah. and I was super jealous because I was <laughs> like, bro, that's so fucking cool. But mm-hmm. it, it's that same type of like mutual appreciation that you mm-hmm. find with other people. And like, I can't tell you how many times I've been wearing like a Demon Slayer shirt and I'll be out at the skate park or yeah. whatever. And people are like, bro, you watch Demon Slayer? And I'm like, Fuck yeah, I do. Oh yeah, dude. And then, and guess then what? Like, so does everybody else at the park. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Demon Slayer is a bad example, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But like, you know, it, it's just it's like it, it's a way for you to show your interests in in like the the type of content that you enjoy and everything like that, and then that just ends up bringing people together, together, and and bringing and, their attention to like. I also enjoy this this cool hobby that you have, and it's right. fucking sick. Same thing with like, uh, you know, uh, sports jerseys and such. You know, yeah. Or uh, I, one time I was at work. Um, this was when I was working at an office, and I had a Blazers hat. And then some guy came in for delivery of something. And I say, I, I grab it to him. He's an older gentleman. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, and then it's like, uh, you know, thank you. Have a nice day. And he says, Go Blazers. And I'm like, Dude, yeah, man. Go Aww, Blazers, dude. <laughs> yeah, and it's like. And I've had the same thing when I was wearing my Boston Celtics hat, you know, and, and it was like, there's this, this community thing, right? Mm-hmm. That I love so much, but it's, and then it's this fan, fan is fanism, fan, 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 something like that. Um, fan Fantasticals. Culture. Fantastic. Not sure. Um, <laughs> fan culture, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's just that sharing of the hobby and being together. I was, I'm going to bring Vocaloid back because I, I've been appreciating it a lot recently. As you should. As I should. I started so very quick, very quick uh, uh, synopsis of my Vocaloid journey. Um, I I think most people start like when they're younger. To mm-hmm. my understanding, and it, this is, does uh, prove to be true, um, most people they listen to it when they're like when they're a lot younger. Um, and I'll get back to that. Um, I was I got into it late because they dropped a mobile game, a gacha game. So obviously I got to play it. It's also a rhythm game, which are like my favorite. So I, I obviously I got to play it, and. I'm playing these games and I'm listening to these songs. Like, these are kind of fun. This is fun. I never really, I mean, I knew Vocaloid, but not quite, but right. I kind of did, you know? I, I know some of like the really popular songs, sure. But if, if like, I can count them on my hand, yeah. right? How much I know the songs and not even their names, right? Right. Um, So I started playing this game like, this is kind of fun. And I started listening to the music and I started putting it on my phone. And then that's been my Vocaloid journey, right? Now that's kind. I'm kind of lying because I do. I did know vocally, but not quite like the bigger picture. Because yeah. I showed you Gary, right? The the jazz Vocaloid one, mm-hmm. um, and I fucked with that heavy, and I listened to it all the time. But I didn't quite understand what it was, right? At mm-hmm. the time, um, I mean, I I knew what Hatsune Miku is and these Vocaloidists of oh, Vocaloids, I suppose, to an extent. Like I knew they existed, but I didn't really, you know, step my uh, uh, stick my foot in deeper. I just enjoying the jazz, you know. Like, this, yeah. is, this is fun. This is this is great, you know. I'm in middle school, high school, I'm, I like jazz and music, and then like I see these. This it's cool, you know, and I'm like I'm having a time, and then you're like it's anime, but it's jazz. anime, but jazz. <laughs> 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 um, but then yeah, I, I start playing the game, and it's a lot of fun. And as I so recently, I saw I got recommended this video, and it was like um, Vocaloid songs to feel nostalgic to. You know, one of these class. You know, one of these. You know, you see them on YouTube all the time. It's a playlist of multiple songs and such. Um, and it's like 2010 to 2011. And I'm listening to these songs, and it's like, yeah, these are like, they're really nice and pleasant and slower, and some are fast beat, uh, fast paced. But that's not the point, right? I go to the comment section, and then some of the comments are like, I remember listening to these songs in like when I was in high school, still figuring out my life, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and these songs calmed me down. Now I'm 30. I have a family now, you know, and I, I, I have a job and a career and I have kids and I come back to this and I, and I listen to this playlist and I felt really nostalgic. I'm like, damn, bro, that's crazy. Right. That's crazy. This robot anime girl, Zach. Yeah. And it has the same type of nostalgia that you would have with like, you know, early, early 2000s bop. Yeah, of course. Right. Of any songs. But I was like. I can imagine, so vocally, I've come to understand that a lot of the songs 
are interesting because they don't hold back. There's a lot of very dark topics that they cover, a lot of happy topics. A lot of the songs, vocalized songs, you listen to them and they're like kind of happy and stuff, but you actually listen, you, you break and translate, uh, you break down and translate the lyrics and it's like, I want to disappear and, and like, I, I wish you didn't exist, you know, like some crazy shit and you're like, oh my gosh. But um, I can imagine a time where, you know, I mean, whenever we're sad, Zach, we listen to sad music, right? Yeah. You know, and it's to associate, to feel that we're not alone, um, to uh, cope with this idea of the of a dystopian world that we are part of, but we can get pa- we could look past it. Those type of feelings, right? Mm-hmm. And Vocaloid does the same things. So you 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 hear these types of songs, and I can imagine someone like that same person in high school or in middle school, or whatever they may be, and they're tr- having trouble with their life, you know, mm-hmm. or their family issues, or or they're they're having they're struggling academically. They don't know what to do, or or they're they're you know it's it's high school, right? So they're being pushed this. You have to figure out what you want to do in life, you know. And I can imagine mm-hmm. that person, that example that I brought, you know, if he's like thirty now or so, I forgot what age I said, you know, that means he was in high school like you know 2010 ish right that type of era yeah well i, I just said 2010 2011 for that playlist but you know and i i can bet i i'm sure around that time it's like bro you're in you're in you oh you're in high school hey you know what you want to do in your life better yeah. figure it out right you know that time and you're like hi oh, you're freaking out and you just kind of want to enjoy high school and do your and play sports or band or whatever you do and all your clubs your chess club or whatever clubs you do but you get your, you know, you're you're being shoved down your throat of these responsibilities you have to acquire somehow magically, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's how schooling works. We can talk about that sometime. Um, <laughs> and it's, I can imagine a time where there's a lot of people who are just maybe not so much depressed, but I'm sure that's part of it, right? But confused, stressed, nervous, unsure. And they listen to these songs and they feel, you know, comforting, soothing, association, attachment, association with other people who are also listening to these songs. Mm-hmm. And you get, you, you, you begin to have an appreciation for, or I began, I began to have an appreciation for what Vocaloid was, what, what, what that was to people, right. what these, these dancing robotic anime girls who sing in, in, and dance you know and and do these you know cute anime voices and these really high octaves singing and stuff and it's a lot of fun right but then i even for even for the upbeat cheery songs you i can imagine just 2010 to 2011 of and you know god god forbid you ever mention anime out of your words or out of your mouth right in that time i could barely do it in my time you know and you 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 get into this hobby and you find these anime girls and you watch anime and stuff and you get associated with other people who also share this this hobby. And Angel you, Beats had just came out. Angel Beats had just came <laughs> out. You know, and you have a time. You have this associate this community, this association. And I could just imagine, imagine how it would be if you were in that time, 2000, 2011, and you met someone in high school who also liked Vocaloid. But right. you know, you would never know. So now nowadays that's why I appreciate what 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 it is, you know. I appreciate what Vocaloid meant to people back then, you know. This is, I had a love letter to anime Zach. This is my love letter to Vocaloid. This is my love letter to the singing dancing robot anime girls, Zach. I think it's super cool that Vocaloid had the same type of like engaging <laughs> oh, <excuse me. laughs> You okay? No, I died for just like one second. I came back though. Oh, okay, cool. Um, had that same kind of engaging, supportive audience that you would find with like mainstream music. Mm. And, you know, the only difference is the the format in which the music was made, mm-hmm. which is super cool because I didn't even realize that Vocaloid went back that far. Like I, I th- think 2007, I want to say. 2007, 2008 when Hatsune Miku first became... I want to say, I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, might even, might even be earlier, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, that's when like Modern Warfare Two came out. <laughs> 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 but point being, like, it, it's so cool to see how much things have changed, not only in 
anime but also in vocaloid and and a lot of um things that are tied to like japanese culture japanese media yeah. all of that kind of stuff and you know it, it's cool to see um the fact that the culture in the east is starting to change the culture in the west i in think like so as well yeah a good way and like honestly i i feel like we could talk all day just about about like wholesome communities and everything like <laughs> yeah that. yeah i'm not saying like vocal is the top tier god tier community no i mean there is never really one i suppose right. the god tier community is just us humans zach the community and that's a lie too <laughs> but the community of people who are not dickheads yeah, that is the best community <laughs> yeah. but i agree um i just wanted to say it i just wanted to, to those you know who would be listening to vocaloid don't want to listen to vocaloid are into vocaloid or not into vocaloid we listen to vocaloid when they were younger i guess to the people that are really were into vocaloid when they were younger i get it i understand and i hope you're doing well I suppose is the best way I can say it. I hope uh, you can look back in those times and you can say, "I'm better than what I'm. I'm better than where I once was." I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting how music can kind of get you through eras of your life. I think so. Yeah, and I mean, you can get you through your eras, but also represent eras of your life. Right. Right. What type of music you listen to around those times? You know, what right. albums had dropped at that time. Yeah, yeah, and like. You know, I, I think of the, the first kind of albums that I think of when I think of high school are, well, jazz albums, obviously. Right, but right. like, you know, I think of like Led Zeppelin albums, mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. And and like that was when I really was getting into like the history of music and all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, because, you know, I was becoming more and more intrigued by the history of music and everything like that and so my spotify playlists if you think that they're confusing now they were even more confusing back then <laughs> because it would go from the beach boys to like slipknot right yeah. <laughs> i'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah um but you know those those albums that were dropping in like you know, 2010, 2011, 2012. Um, you know, I remember like all of them. Yeah. And like, I remember when Rap God came out. That oh, was, I do too. That was wild. That was, that was an interesting time. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of, of like stuff that you would remember from that, like, like music that you and I both listened to that was kind of coming out back then. Like the, uh, the plain white tees were popping yeah. off. Yeah. Um, you know, I, oh gosh. See, I, I mentioned this before in the podcast, but I didn't listen to very much music back then. Or at right. least it was very limited because I was limited to my little dinky MP3 player, right? That can hold your MP3 player nugget. Yeah. Yeah. That, that it can only hurt the next amount of songs. And, you know, if I had to, if I wanted a new song, I would have to replace them. And if I wanted a new song just to have, I would have to, uh, I had to have to pass it through my parents first for them to approve to put it on there for me. Right. You know? Um, so if there, were, if there was any profanity, Zach, any innuendos, oh, out of the question, Zach. That being said, I've listened to Chris Brown and stuff. So there oh, are, yeah. I guess, innuendos here and there. But um, just, I mean, mainstream Chris Rock back in the, uh, Chris Rock, the fuck? Chris Brown um, was kind of topical. Kinda topical, I know, right? <laughs> 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 oh boy <laughs> um anyways <laughs> um you know that type of akon and and sean kingston uh, i listen to all i listen to those type of music back then kind of r&b mm -hmm. pop uh hip-hop was not very well hippin or hoppin hippin or hoppin for me it's like i was not hippin or hoppin zach back then yeah because because they say bad words zach and i can't listen to that they say the bad words. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, it's so funny because there was a time when my parents weren't super stoked about me listening to vulgar music and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, understandable, right? But, well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, they didn't want me listening to Eminem. And then, you know, I had Eminem on my first iPod classic, right? Uh, which is hilarious. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I, I need to remind my dad of that because um, that is so funny. But 
you know, it, once it got to a certain point, once I got to a certain age, it was kind of just like, you know, whatever I found interesting and, you know, whatever. And especially once um, it got easier to to see more music and listen to more music, like, you know, when when YouTube was popping off and like, you know, the the beginning stages of smartphones and those types of things. Mm hmm. Um, you know, that, that made it really easy to just kind of have recommended playlists and then just yeah. kind of going ham mm -hmm. and discovering new music and like, oh my gosh. Yeah. My music taste is so confusing. <laughs> it's so funny. Like on the way over here, um, I don't remember if I said this before, but I have a playlist of just a combination of a bunch of different playlists and it's called don't be sad go get a tattoo mm -hmm. um that's a playlist that i listen to when i'm you know getting tattooed uh <laughs> and so naturally yes that as one as might. one does yeah and so you know it just ended up being an amalgamation of a bunch of different playlists that i had that ah, i just yeah, kind of yeah. like threw into one mega playlist that i think is like I think right now it's like five hours long or something mm. like that. Um, and so, you know, I have, gosh, I have like Jacob Collier. I have Slipknot, uh, <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. I have Toto, you know, like, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. There's just so much different stuff that's on there mm -hmm. that is just so weird. And, and so... Oh, I also have like anime openings and stuff in nah, there. Right, right. Um, I have the one song I don't remember. Uh, Dolphin by somebody. I don't remember. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, got a city pop in there naturally, as yeah. one does. Um, and and you know just like a bunch of other random shit. Mm -hmm. And so I think I need to send you that playlist because I think you do. It's so funny. Um, I... and and it's just getting more anime. That's stuff good. In it. <laughs> that's me inject that, that's me in uh, 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 um breaking in there. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing it in. I got to say I I do the same as well in the sense that because YouTube music. I think we did have this conversation, but I think it was in the car. Yeah. Because I remember having this conversation. So I'm not in the podcast. So I have YouTube music now. I still have Spotify, but that's because I'm in the currently in the transition of moving on to YouTube music. After thinking about it, I think it's a better, even though it's more expensive, it's a better price proposition. Yeah. And actually, I think Spotify is a lot more expensive now. So now it's even more of a good proposition. Mm -hmm. you get the benefit. It's not an ad, but it could be. You get the benefits of YouTube, you know, being able to play music and stuff. And you also get YouTube premium. No ads. Yeah. Background playing, all that, all that fun stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So... I might still have Spotify because I'm still trans still transitioning. But at the moment, my Spotify is for my normal music, my normie music, right? Mm -hmm. And my YouTube music is for my anime music, Japanese music and all that type of stuff. And the reason why I haven't really made the complete switch yet is because I've been really enjoying having my discovery on YouTube music just be anime stuff and Japanese stuff. Yeah. It's very fun because it's just like there's no no there's no main there's no western mainstream or western anything involved there's two separate entities and it's fascinating so I, whatever i feel in i can choose one or the other obviously for value wise it's not the greatest and i will switch at some point probably sometime very soon but it is interesting but what youtube music can do is you can uh you have your playlist that you make right as a music music streaming software or music streaming service does you have your playlists, right? And then you can download specific playlists to listen to offline, right? As streaming services do, as one might, as one does. And then you can shuffle through your downloaded playlist because now they're in a downloaded uh, category of their own of right. the playlists that you've downloaded, and you can shuffle through all of them. So it does the same thing you do, except automatically, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fun. So I can, but it's anime music. So it's uh, one of my one of my playlists. I have uh, Vocaloid, and then uh, VTuber songs naturally and uh my play is called cute japanese songs which are now which is just what it's called but there's all sorts of japanese songs whether they're cute or not quite very cute um so i guess that's a lie um <laughs> and then i have my workout playlist because i mean i may as well download it too why not why not why not 
which is my my metal Japanese, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> which has made it in there, which is interesting. Zach, you want me to listen to metal? This is my compromise. <laughs> it has Dude, to be weeb. <laughs> okay, it was so funny because I was riding in the car one time with you mm -hmm. and we just were listening to the playlist that you had last listened to and it was your workout playlist. No, it wasn't my workout. No, it wasn't in the car. It was when we were building this desk. Oh, that's right. That's what it yeah, was. Yeah. Because we're built we're having a time building a desk as two dudes would <laughs> two two guys like two two gentlemen like us building a desk doesn't get any better than that that was so much fun it was fun and we did we did quick work on that gotta say <laughs> <laughs> i would never build a desk by myself ever again <laughs> apparently i'm just the guy but yeah we were we were building the desk and you had a playlist on mm -hmm. and it was your workout playlist yeah and i was like oh so you're actually listening to like some screamy vocals and you're like yeah yeah, yeah i dabble in the screamy I vocals and i'm like fuck yeah dude yeah like that's sick and and you know we kind of started talking about like metal vocals a little bit and mm -hmm. you know just talking about like the cool thing the cool sounds that you can make with your own voice yeah. and like all of that kind of stuff and it was it was just a wholesome time it, it was, was like it was great you know you you took an idea that I that I presented and you and you took your own spin on it, which is super <laughs> fucking sick. Because <laughs> I will say for the people who have never listened to like metal in different languages, screaming in Japanese is the coolest oh, fucking it's, thing oh, ever. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very different, very different. Um, I recommend it, especially if you're not. I mean, okay, if you're like me, right? Not too super, super into it, but you're super into Japanese music. I feel like it's a good middle ground, a good yeah. bridge. Right. So, I mean, I listen to it. I don't, I don't really listen to it on my own time. I just don't want to work out. It's in my workout playlist, right? Yeah. Got to say, you know, working at, working out to those type of musics. Very, very important. Yeah. Um. So give it a shot. Uh, Very hype. Very fun. You know, Um. I, I, I want to say more, but I'm not really a professional in that. So I'm speaking in the sense of I'm a I'm, I'm a casual. I'm a normie. You're a casual consumer. I'm a cat. I'm a casual enjoyer of the screamy boys. Yeah, but in Japanese. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a lot of fun, and I, I want to say I've said this in the podcast before, but the only really big reason why, I guess, I mean, part of me want choosing the Japanese screamy boys instead is just my love for the Japanese language and I've been listening to more Japanese things more so than English speaking things or any speaking things for that matter. And that's not because I'm I'm in I'm in denial of my language and culture but more so my inch my it's uh the, my interest in that language right. and the language I am beginning to learn um the language that I'm fascinated by because of the anime my love for anime. Mm -hmm. So naturally I feel like that helped with me being able to listen to those type of things and just Japanese music in general. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why you know I listen to city pop and it, it reminds me of like yeah back when back in the 80s and 90s going down the streets of Tokyo Shibuya and and the flashing lights and the and and my and my my, my wavy hair <laughs> you know if there's if <laughs> you know guy like me Zach, you <laughs> guy know like you guy yeah. like me yeah you know you weren't alive during that time but you know if if there's anyone who i can imagine who would fully embrace like the 80s japanese style i would imagine it to be you yes. just because like I don't know. You just kind of fit the vibe check. I Thank don't know. You, Zach. <laughs> I'm going to come in with wavy hair, baggy pants, and uh, a collared shirt. It's going to be me. I look forward to it. And I just look like a hippie. Nah. I look like a degenerate. A very cold degenerate. I'm freezing. <laughs> you had a hoodie on. Where did it go? I did, but I wanted to wear my I wanted to wear my IMA merch, Zach. I'll do anything for it. <laughs> Hoes never get cold. Hoes never get cold, Zach. Come on, baby. Um oh one thing I segues are weird. Um, oh, by the way, oh, yeah, yeah. um, before you segue away, if at any point you want to like relocate the positioning of the air conditioner so it's blowing at me and not you, I just... don't know if there's a way because okay, nobody can see this, but the the tube that's so air conditioners brief breakdown. There's the unit, mm -hmm. there's a tube, well pipe, call it a tube, um, that stretches towards the window so that it can transfer fresh air, convert it, and then release hot air. Yeah. 
or vice versa, however way the AC wants to do it. That AC AC nerds, calm down. I know this is not quite it, but bear with me. This is just for the sake of demonstration because nobody actually cares. Get fucked. Uh, <laughs> Got him. Got him. The way it's t- twisted, Zach, you don't want to see it. It's very concerning. The amount of angles it has to make in order to make this. So if I were to tighten it even more towards this wall, I think it, it would not be pretty. Um, oh, no, I was talking about like... Just like rotating it? Yeah, angling it out and then... It's not really blowing towards me, though. It's more like that and then bouncing to the ceiling and, and then towards me. So I guess... Why so. is this the, the stuff that we're talking about? So I watched <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went to go see the movie, I too, did go huh? to see the movie. Zach, okay. Obviously, I'm not going to speak very much on it, obviously, because I won't, because I think you were interested in it. So my brief breakdown of Jujutsu Kaisen is that the first 10 or so episodes, I was bored out of my fucking mind, Zach. Character like, development. Character development. It was not there. I don't know if I don't know if we mentioned this in the podcast or if that got, um, <clears throat> for lack of better words, yeeted, but <laughs> yeah, pain. <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. I'm sorry. But, so... Uh, I was watching Jujutsu Kaisen because the movie was coming out right. and a couple of my coworkers wanted to see the movie. He was like, let's go together. Fuck it. Yeah, let's go have a time. Um, and I was like, okay, I should probably start watching this now <laughs> because I've been neglecting it for this entire time. Another shonen show. So I wasn't expecting much, obviously. Um, and I'm watching the first the first couple episodes and I am like, <sighs> I am so bored, Zach. Like, this is just not interesting. Mm-hmm. The main character is not enticing. And he's like overpowered as shit, just human. Like he just has superhuman strength and sh- and shit like that, which is fine. It's whatever. It is what it is. I watched pl- tons of animes where the main character is overpowered because they're a lot of fun sometimes. You know, um, shout out to the Chi Isekais where they Isekai to a different world and they have max stats because fuck it. Um, but I'm watching this and. Without spoiling anything, the main anchor for why he became... So basically, Jusuke Kaisen is that there is these sorcerers, quote-unquote, who fight curses. Mm-hmm. So these sorcerers are the good guys, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, that can be... Anyways. Um, and they fight the curses, or like which are these monster-type things, right? Classic classic shonen stuff, you know what I mean? Um, it is what it is, but... His his anchor for becoming one of these sorcerers was done so loosely that I felt zero emotion at all. I was just like, "Uh huh, yep, okay, okay, cool." And then because they could have played it out really nicely, but it was just and I, to my understanding, getting this in the manga as well, which means that to my understanding, this is just shown in bait. This is just, um, this is just high octane action bait right mm-hmm. which is fu- it's not not a bad thing it is what it is the animation is really good like really good and the fights are fire and the music is fire and the music is really fun it's kind of funky it's like um how do i explain it right now in demon slayer right it's kind of like a more orchestra 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 sorry mm-hmm. um this type of triumphant type of sound and that is there in Jujutsu Kaisen but it's more modern it's kind of like funky it's kind of like rap and it's kind of it's very fascinating gotta say um one uh it's, there's like a it's I don't know how to explain it. it's like very it's very it's very uh zoomer <laughs> if you if that makes sense like it's very it's very fun mm-hmm. and it's something that I never really experienced too much there, there was one anime I watched where it had that and I really liked that because it was different. So Jujutsu Kaisen is plays very modern. It's, cool. Yeah, and 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 I would and is that a bad thing? No, is it a good thing? Sure. I mean, it's, it could be one or the other, but it's just a different experience, I would say. Um, but that doesn't shy for the fact that as a storytelling guy, I was fucking bored. Bro, okay. So going from stories like Violet Evergarden and that yeah. kind of stuff, and even from Demon yeah, Slayer. okay, it's yeah, it's not fair, sure, yeah, yeah, but even even Demon Slayer being like a shonen type, mm-hmm. like actiony type anime, right? You know, they were they were it's a- still sh- yeah, they yeah. were able to like tell a really really good story, mm-hmm. and then when you watch a show that doesn't really go as hard as Demon Slayer does when it comes to like storytelling yeah. and that kind of stuff, 
then it's just kind of like eh. I might and, s- and by the way i am not saying that demon slayer is better than jujitsu kaisen because i've never watched it but also at the same time i mean you know demon slayer did a really good job with a lot of things and so it's like uh, uh, it depends on the audience it's two different shows very two di- two very different shows while they very are very two different shows very show two different while the concept of the same when you think about it fighting demons and fighting show. fighting curses and stuff yeah and exercising them mm-hmm. you're like oh that's the same thing but you, then you realize oh that's kind of just like every shonen but you know that's besides yeah. the point <laughs> um so i don't like to compare them i call just kaisen this demon slayer of 2020 because demon slayer was the big thing in 2019 ish in 2020 or uh, 2020 just kaisen was the big thing right or 2021 2021 20, i can't okay one or the other right 2020 to 2021 or 2019 to 2020 i can't remember quite well but timelines are fucked timelines are very fucked i think i spoiled myself because i watched Jujutsu in kaisen whoa i watched jujutsu kaisen after watching demon slayer mugen train and demon slayer season two yeah 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 I feel like I, but, but I knew that. So I was not going to let that, or I was going to try my best to not let that bias me. I mean, that's like watching Clannad and then watching Your Lie in April. Yeah. But at the same time, those are two very different shows. So that, that is a good example for Demon Slayer and Jesus Kaiser. So I was yeah. doing my best not to let that skew me. It did a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but the animation is still really good. And the vibe was fantastic. Like I said, very kind of uh, in the new age, very modern. It's very fun. Um, I'm watching it. And it wasn't until around episode 10-ish, 11, and that's a long time, Zach. Mm-hmm. I was watching it in the press in the pretense of, I am sh- I know it's going to be good, so I just have to sit here and wait for it to be good. Right. But that's like, imagine if I, it was airing. I would have dropped it so quick. Or I don't know, maybe I watched it to stay in the conversation. But yeah, I was just bored out of my fucking mind. No, okay, that, okay, I'm exaggerating. I'm sorry. I apologize. I wasn't that bored, but I was not. I was incredibly uninterested. Um, I stayed because one of the main guys, Gojo Satsuro, he's fucking hot. Oh my god, Zach, what a man! Arthur, do we need to have a conversation about something? <laughs> Zach, what a fucking specimen! Oh my lord. Anyways, you're, you're gonna you're, you're you're looking at me and you're laughing at me, and then you're gonna watch and you're gonna be like, Arthur, I understand. What he's a he's quite a he's quite a gentleman. But anyways. Oh shit! What's the what's the guy's name from uh, fucking Origar? Hachiman? No. Hach- uh, Hayato? Totsuka? <laughs> I think I think it was uh, Totsuka. The, yeah. The very beautiful man. The very beautiful man. Yeah. He's the Gojo is beautiful for a different reason. He is beautiful in the way that you make yourself really or unsure of how you feel about yourself. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. And you, I think you're interested in watching this. So I'll let you uh, experience that. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is around as soon as I get to like episode 10 ish, 9 ish, 10 ish, I stories start to come together, Zach, right? Mm-hmm. And the point of the plot starts to stick with me. And it, I actually begin to start feeling invested because they throw, they, do, they don't pull their punches. They let you know, they remind you of the fact that these, you know, demons and curses are pretty dark. And pretty fucked, mm-hmm. and they don't hold back. They're there. It's not. It's not a kids show, you know. They remind me of that, and they let me know that. And I'm like, oh fuck, oh shit. And now I'm invested. And then season two. It's one of those things where it's like a season one, but it's part one and then part two. I don't know why they do this. It's very confusing, but I understand because it's season one, and after episode twelve. It goes to episode 13, the opening changes and the vibe changes, but it's right after. So you can't really call it season two because they're not broken. They're not like airing in two different points of time. Right. It's right. It's back to back. So I get it. But it's like, what is happening? It, it makes it very confusing. So I just say part season one, part two. Or you guess if you say season two, I get it. So that hap- that comes in and now I'm like, all right, I'm in, I'm in. And now Zach... I'm having a time. Now, Zach, I'm I am I am now Jujutsu Kaisen fan number three thousand forty four. 
or rather 3 million 344,200 I am now I am now one of them and I'm like I'm having a time <laughs> because now because what is the point in fighting when there are no stakes no value no weight right I understand I'm watching and I understand yes these are curses that kill people and stuff and it's like yeah but there is no like there was no slap in the slap on the hand slap on the face of like demon slayer did where it's just like this is reality right now. Right. This is the this is the world you live in. You know? And this is the responsibility that you are given. Demon Slayer did that pretty well pretty early. Yeah. Just the Kaizen? Not really. So I, I was watching and, you know, the fights were very cool and very fun. But I'm just like... <laughs> but now I'm like, all right, I'm having a time. And then they go into a tournament arc because it's a shonen. So, of course, there has to be a tournament. Um, You haven't watched very many shonen, so you don't know this. But... There just has to be a tournament between schools or some shit because, of course, there has to be. Um, <laughs> but it's actually mad fun to watch, which I cannot say for for many other shows I've watched. But it was actually super fun to watch, and I'm having a time. So yeah, I gotta say, Jujutsu the Kaisen towards the end, very good. And the uh, oh my gosh, I want you to watch it because the, there was this, the a minor detail that I really love about the show, um, and this helps because I got to know more of the characters and the story by this time is the ED song and the ED credits theme thingy. Um, the ED um, for this part two of Jesus the Kaisen. It's so pretty. And they have this little narrative that they do is super pretty and it's so cute and wholesome. And the song is like, oh, it's very pretty. And I, I cannot wait for you to watch it and, and, and see the little tiny narrative they have. It's very cute. But the reason why is because now at this point, I finally have as platform of understanding each character, how they interact with, what the relationships are, and what that means to me, and right. what that means to each other, and now I'm having a time, and now I, and now I'm not skipping the ED, <laughs> but I'm clapping Zach because I'm having a time, and then I watched Jesus Guys Zero, the movie. Whew. Was it good? Oh, Zach, was it good? Was it good? It was fantastic. I would. Not, I want to say not at, in my opinion, not as good as the Mugen Train, but because they're two very different shows or, or um, uh, uh, movie franchises series, I can't compare the two. So they're both good. I would say personally, I enjoyed Mugen Train more because I cried during it and I cried when I watched the episodes afterwards. <laughs> so I, I cried twice, <laughs> but Jujutsu Kaisen. I definitely could have cried if they went more into the characters, but I, I understand it's a movie, right? They're kind of speed running it. The movie is based off of a spinoff manga. Mm. So it's a prequel of the show, of the manga. So you don't necessarily have to read it or watch it, I suppose, um, to keep watching the show or yeah. to keep reading the manga for that matter. And I understand they need to, you know, it's a one and a, one hour, 45 minute movie. They, they need to, you know, they got to do what they have to do. Yeah. So that's understandable. But if they did a little bit more towards a, a certain certain character, I would have I would have bawled my eyes out. Got to say, but no, it's very fun, very hype. the The fights are awesome, and it's a great watch, Zach. It's been a long time since I've watched like a, an action in general in a theater in a cinema. Oh boy, Zach, surround and and surround sound, IMAX, big screen, and subwoofers. I forgot about that, Zach. I forgot about that experience. Yeah. I love my Sennheiser, Zach. I love my Arias over there, Zach. I love my gamer chair, Zach. But oh my gosh, I forgot how nice speakers were. Dude, it's crazy because when when you listen to headphones for long enough and then you go and listen to like a really good sound system, you're right. like, whoa. You're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm like, I was having a time, Zach. So yeah, I recommend watching it, and I, I, to my, I, they're probably gonna put it on Crunchyroll like they did with Mugen Train. Woo! Probably. I mean, I don't know. I would assume so, especially since it's making that bank. So maybe in a bit they'll do that. Um, maybe, but but I think it'll do it soon because it only aired for like a week. Wait, well, really? I, yeah, I think so. I mean, I could check again, but I think it only was in theaters and it only showed for a week, which sucked. Because I was hoping it'd be longer, but I guess I kind of understand it's, you know, Western and especially around here, not quite as popular. So I can get it. I can understand. Um, but yeah. did the Demon Slayer movie air here? 
it did air here it aired i'm not sure how for how long um my friends say that it was a similar thing kind of a week ish um but demon slayer aired see i can understand at the time because it aired i think it was one of the first movies to air after theaters had just opened back up yeah 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 um which was a bold move especially for an anime movie um but either way so when it was so when made big so i was like okay maybe after that now they'll make they'll, they'll just leave openings and shows for longer you know but i guess not i can check again but that's what's what it happened so we got to watch it quick and they're watching it fantastic so i don't think if it is still in theaters zach i would love to rewatch it zach <laughs> we, we should check after this i would well, but you gotta watch the anime but technically not because it's a prequel but you gotta watch the anime to get the, because there's characters in the anime that are in the prequel so you know it's like that kind of, that type of thing right um but, oh man zach the amount of times i wanted to stand up in my damn chair <laughs> I just go, yo! <laughs> hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> no, but the the way they do the music in Juice Kaisen, and I say it's like very modern, but oh, I need you to watch it because you need I need you to understand with me because it's it's so well arranged with the way the fights are. It's perfect. Like it's actually there's a point. Oh, I, I want to say it's so bad. And this was a thing, Zach. Watch this tie back, Zach. Where when you have these things that you can talk about with other people that you've never been able to, like these hobbies, mm -hmm. these niches or whatever it may be, and you want to talk about it so bad, we have no one to talk about it with. And and I'm not telling I'm not telling you this to choke hold you to watch Jujutsu Kaisen. Now that was not the point. I, I, if that was what you're getting at, that was not the point. The point is that the need and want to talk about a certain thing hit like really bad when i started or not when i started working but I've, I've been working for a long time right at this one job and we had a new co-worker and I, I i found out in a bit that she liked anime but she is not in a space where she can like she's in like high school and stuff and although the anime is really popular she's like more into it than just demon slayer and stuff yeah so she didn't have anyone to talk about so i would talk about it with her and then the amount of times that you know she'd light up every time i'd talk about anime with her although she watched very different shows than me um she was having a time that was great and then we had another co-worker come in around her same age who also was fucking with anime and now they're talking and now they're best friends right fuck yeah isn't that great that that's kind of how it is with me and a lot of the hobbies that i have because i i have a lot of expensive hobbies yeah um and so it makes it very difficult to like want to be able to talk or like be able to talk about that stuff with people mm -hmm. and so you know now that i watch anime a lot it's so it's so funny because i was uh i don't remember who i was talking to i think i was talking to my brother mm -hmm. and he was like I watch anime every once in a while and I was like, mm. fucking what? <laughs> and and this was the same day that I was wearing the Demon Slayer shirt. Ah. Um, and he was like, oh, you watch Demon Slayer? And I was like, how the fuck do you know about Demon Slayer? And he's like, bro, I've been around for a while. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And, um, and, you know, it was a very brief conversation, but mm -hmm. apparently my brother watches anime, I guess. Mm hmm. And he was just sitting there talking about a silent voice the entire time. Interesting. And I was like, he watched. I would not see him watching a silent voice. I would see you watching it before him. Yeah, and he soon. Said, but 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 yeah. My point. In case he said he's watched it like a ton of times. Yeah. And I was like, it's a very watchable movie. I'm like, wow. Interesting. Well, now you got to watch this so you can talk about. It. <laughs> that's but, true. But that's a boy, right? Yeah. So you get to talk about it. Yeah, and like the conversations that you and I have, like anytime I I, I watch like any anime, really, mm -hmm. I just want to talk to you about it, and like that's a part of the reason why whenever you talk about a sh uh, show on the podcast, I just want to go and watch it so that we could talk yeah. about it, just because like the conversations that we have, <clears throat> the conversations that we have about anime are just so interesting to me mm -hmm. and like mentally stimulating, <laughs> and it, it's like. <laughs> It's like me sitting and talking to a professional photographer about photography. And those yeah. are like the best fucking conversations I've mm -hmm. ever had because I've been there. And a uh, quick little tangent, but um, I went to a skate park 
um, and like a bunch of pros were supposed to be there and everything. And one mm -hmm. of the pro riders that I was talking to, he used to be a photographer for a scooter magazine. And mm -hmm. he's the only person in the world who has been on the cover of the magazine and also taken a cover photo for the magazine. Mm -hmm. So that was super cool. And he was talking to me about gear and stuff. And like, I actually got to go and, and shoot pictures of him. And like, mm -hmm. he, he let me like get them all set up like portrait style and yeah. I took a portrait of him. And yeah. Like, it was super fucking cool. Well, when you get to talk with someone, Zach, and you get to say shit like 18 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 55 millimeter, full frame, APS-C sense. You see these words I'm saying? Yeah. To like 95%, 99% of people don't make any sense. You find that 1%. And you just say these numbers and these words and they understand these numbers and these words. Right. And you're having a time. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I can I can sit here and be like, yeah, I'm shooting at 50 millimeters F1.8 ISO is at like 250, I think. 200, and, I think. Well, yeah. But and and, you know, we're shooting at one sixtieth of a second because obviously. But. If that makes sense to you let's be friends <laughs> you know it's like it's like if if you i mean to the point of someone in the in the in the community it's like yeah obviously that makes sense you're saying some basic things to literally everybody else that's like what the hell did you just say yeah are you speaking in tongues over there <laughs> yeah but like is this japanese <laughs> <laughs> are you japanese <laughs> uh but like when you find that that person that understands your jargon and everything like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, I've met a bunch of beginner photographers and that just makes me super excited oh, yeah. because it's like, dude, I've been doing this for like almost five years now, which is crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. And like to look at all of the stuff that I've been able to, to make since then. And like the amount of contribution that I've been able to make to this show and to like, you know, I'm shooting like, video parts for people for writing and like you know i'm able to basically have indirect con uh like contact with like scooter companies mm -hmm. and like professional writers and everything like that it's like it's fucking crazy mm -hmm. and so when i meet someone who's like just starting out let's say they have like an m200 and they're like i want to get into shooting video and i'm like Yes. Yes, sir. Like, <laughs> like even even you know like I uh, one of the people who I just recently talked to, they were shooting on like a Canon T seven I, and like you know they mm -hmm. had a kit lens and like mm -hmm. a one of the shitty zoom lenses, and I was like, that's a start, dude. Like, yeah, being able to have a lens that you know might not take the sharpest pictures, but you can see what that di what the zi different zoom ranges like what those pictures look like. Mm -hmm. That like that's super important. So that you can kind of learn what you can use that lens for. Yeah, and it becomes it becomes like a second nature type thing. You're walking around and you see something and you have your camera bag and you see something. You're like, oh, that would be sick. I'm going to take this camera. I'm going to grab this lens out of my lens collection because this one would work in this situation in this moment right now. I have like five seconds to take this shot before this bird fucking heats out of here. Yeah. Change my settings. Hell yeah. You know, one shot, only shot. And once you can get to the point to where you can kind of make those those calculations in your mm -hmm. head. Um, it's like speed running. It's like, yeah, basically. <laughs> but like once you get that down to like, oh, OK, cool. So I'm going to grab out this lens. And like, you know, when we were out shooting photos for you, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just grab the 85 and we can kind of do mm -hmm. some really cool stuff because we were wanting to take pictures of of. Uh, some new north merch and everything like that and mm -hmm. that was super fun i had a blast with that i was using your m50 and that mm -hmm. was or uh m6 what what the fuck is your m6 game? mark ii m6 mark ii Blah. i know right <laughs> <laughs> i in case you couldn't tell the only reason why i ever touched that camera is to for that yeah. is for on it it's okay i mean to be fair i didn't even know that camera existed until i was you know shopping but yeah i get it you know it's it's like this. I was watching a VTuber. Um, they were playing Getting Over It. You know that game, Zach? Do I know that game? Do I know that game? Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, there's this dude who is naked in a cauldron or a pot. 
and he has a hammer. I know this sounds absurdly bizarre. <laughs> and he is in this cauldron, shirtless, and he has a hammer. And he uses a hammer to move himself across obstacles and climb up higher and higher. For what his motives is, nobody knows. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe we do know. Or maybe we don't. I don't know. And then there's this guy with a soothing British accent that just calmly lets you know that you fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's great. It's fantastic. Um, the point infuriating. Of, and very infuriating. If it's a type of game, if you know, like Jump King or something like that, those type of games where you mess up once and you, you'll take a fucking tumble and you got to make your way back up. So this VTuber I'm watching, Fauna, one of my favorites. She's an English VTuber as well. She is really good at it. <laughs> like I, I was watching her endurance stream, which basically just means you ha- you set a goal and you can't stop streaming until you hit that goal. And she's trying to win. Uh, uh, I was going to say Jump King. Getting over it 50 times. 50? 50 times. Yeah. Because at 50, you get a golden, you, your pot turns gold. So she was getting the golden pot times. 50 times. Yeah, yeah. And now you're thinking, that's what the fucking shit. What but, kind of masochist do you have to be? <laughs> well, Zach, she's really good at it. <coughs> right. So I'm watching this. I, I tried this too as well. I'm sure you did as well. Um, uh, you've, I'm sure you've played Getting Over It if you haven't. Have you? Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, I have as well. And it is tragic. But I'm watching her and I'm watching the way she moves her mouse. And she's just fucking flying. And I'm like, what in the world? And it's the type of thing where she's like, she's grabbing and she's lifting and she's launching herself. And if she misses one, she corrects herself and, and grabs the other, the, another, like if she goes through one wall, misses, she uses the other wall to leverage herself back into the wall. And I'm like, what is happening? What is happening? What are you fucking wizard bitch? <laughs> <laughs> and she's just going, right? Because it's so natural. Yeah. And she's just like, oh, I messed up. Let me just fix myself real quick. Okay, let me just... Oh, yeah, I'm going to launch myself here. Uh, I, I don't know if I can make this, but I bet you, I bet you this is possible jump. Maybe just one sec. Bam. Like, well, what is happening, Zach? Well, because she's, it's a thing that she likes and she enjoys and she's got really fucking good at it. And now all of a sudden I'm here watching and I'm like, how in the world? So the same exact reason why someone can listen to like a conversation between you and me talking about numbers and shit. That's something like I'm we're saying numbers and letters and acronyms that pertain to a camera. And they're like, what in the world are they talking about? Right. And they get into it. And, you know, and it's just the whole thing. And then we could and then, you know, you could teach them. You could talk with them. You want to understand. It's just learning hobbyism. And it's so easy to do now. I think this is another topic that got yeeted off F to pay respects. But it's so fun to just learn random things nowadays because it's so easy to do. Right. With TikTok and YouTube shorts, this fast form type of media, Zach, this content of just, I'm just on Twitter and I can just scroll and I find a tweet that has a, a random t- a random fact. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And all of a sudden, I just know this random fact. You're on TikTok. Like, uh, what, what example did I say? If you were to tell, if I was to go back in time and tell 12 year old self that I would randomly learn the rise and fall of the Aztec Empire from a YouTube short. Would he believe me? Of course he wouldn't fucking believe me. He'd be like, what the fuck? Who are you? I'm calling the cops. He's like, bro, I, I, it, we had a week long unit yeah. on the Aztec Empire and I didn't even learn this shit. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what, how in the world? It's because of this, it is this it's so easy to do now and uh, old people are like back in my back in day my, I had we t- had dictionaries t- and encyclopedias and, 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 and atlases and you don't know kiss t- 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 I, had to, I had to walk to my local library which was five miles away uphill both <laughs> ways barefoot in a foot of snow <laughs> <laughs> yes you did but guess what? Grandma. Grandpa. The future is now, old man. <laughs> it's different now. Now I can... How many times am I going to have to teach you this lesson, <laughs> old man? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so easy now, right? Right. To just obtain random information. Th- this video, Zach, of just vocal... Where's my mouse? Of 
Vocaloid, but not just that, how a pipe organ works, how sound works, where it comes from, how a sound can replicate human voice, how that would work, why that would work, why it has to do with math. Why do I know this? Because of a YouTube video. Obviously, I'm not an expert at it. Right. But I know this random tidbits of information that I can just use and incorporate into my life. I find that type of learning fascinating. Obviously, look, I feel the way I feel about school and education and I can, we can talk about it another time, but the general idea that is supposed to be it, but that line has been blurred. Again, we'll talk about that, but the general idea is obtaining all sorts of common knowledge information so that you can apply it elsewhere. I understand that's a point of school. So besides that fact, nowadays, it's all about learning super quick, fast form media. I want to learn, like learning things fast. Crash courses, one minute long TikToks. Is, what's the max of a TikTok? It's a minute, right? It used to be a minute. Now it's, it's three longer? minutes. Okay. Three? Yeah. You're watching a three minute TikTok? If it's interesting. YouTube shorts. I would, I would never have thought of myself to watch YouTube shorts. And I'm sitting there watching YouTube shorts, Zach. You know, I think the cool thing is... If you just have Instagram reels, snap, snap, Snapchat stories, five minute crafts. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have that curiosity, though, and and you want to learn more information, regardless mm -hmm. of what it is, you know, then then that kind of stuff sticks with you. Right. Using this example, like this guy just decided that he wanted to learn about all this shit. And mm -hmm. then he was just like, you know what? I'm going to learn this shit. And then not only that, I'm going to teach you about it. And then you're going to be able to take all this information and do fuck all with it. Yeah. But the point is, is that you're, you're wanting to learn more. You're wanting to, to grow more and you're wanting to like learn it. Basically the goal in my life. And I, I guess I kind of came to this conclusion after I got out of high school, like, my goal in life is to learn as much as I possibly can over the course of my life mm -hmm. about literally anything. And mm -hmm. I'm just a well of useless knowledge. And I got that trait from my dad. And I love the fact that that is how my life is because mm -hmm. I, I don't think I would have it any other way. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think I would ever be able to live my life without knowing, you know, the fact that they're building a Titanic too, and they're about to take, they're going to take the same maiden voyage as the original Titanic, even though the iceberg probably isn't there because, you know, global warming and shit. But, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, it, it's like just random bits of information mm -hmm. and, you know, just being able to see so many cool things, experience so many cool things and share so much cool information with a bunch of people who want to learn. Mm hmm. And and I think that that's one of the greatest things about hobbyism is that that exchange of information is basically just kind of all in good fun. It is. And it's all between people of similar like, not necessarily professors or teachers or educators, but they could be educators. Right. Who knows? But that's not the point. The point is simply just talking. And if it happens to teach, then it happens to teach. Otherwise, it's just conversation. Right. It's asking questions. It's learning more. It's you thought you knew what you thought you knew everything, but there's more to it. Mm -hmm. It's just an endless hole that is nowadays even more easier to to access if you want to. All you have to do is search it. Just Google search it, Zach. You don't gotta walk, walk your ass five miles down to your local Barnes and Noble. Uphill both ways. Uphill both ways. In How is snow, that possible? Barefoot. Don't know. That sounds horribly inefficient, Mom. You don't have to do that anymore, Zach, you know? Right. I could just be on my bed, butt f fucking naked for whatever reason. What's the difference between butt naked and butt fucking naked? Uh, because I'd be butt fucking naked, Zach. That's the difference. Is it the act of butt fucking while you're naked? I don't think so, but <laughs> that would make sense. You would just, I could just, just Google it. Yeah. And to be like, yep. All what right. What are the symptoms of prostate cancer? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know. I hope so. Like, yep. 
<laughs> Honestly, like I think it's I think it's so funny because I've accidentally just made it like <laughs> I, I wasn't doing it purposefully in the beginning, but at this point, I'm just like trying to derail you as much as possible. I, that's okay. I get it. I understand. Guy like you, you want to derail me, but I cannot be derailed. You cannot tame me, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Once I am railed, I cannot be derailed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like the, the My idea. My chastity. <laughs> 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 at that point you would need a chastity diaper uh, <laughs> so yep <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> I don't even know where my point was anymore but so you've you succeeded yeah. oh uh, yeah so it's just it's just it's uh, it's just easy to get embraced that's all and some people I feel like they would take they're gonna take that for granted because yeah. they're like, uh, like old person. Oh, I, back in the day, I used to, did, 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 I had to do this, and you're like, and you're like, shut up, old man, you know. And they're, they're and they're on their Nintendo Switch, on and then trying to take a TikTok with their iPhone 13 Pro that their dad bought them, you know. And it's just like, uh, you know, if I really wanted to go to the barn, if I really want to go to the library, well, I don't need to walk. I'll just, I'll just take my mod, my Tesla Model S that my mom bought me, you know, and you know the, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so. The, it's a lot easier to do things nowadays, right? Right. And that's not a bad thing. But you have to understand where that came from. Why it's easier nowadays. Right. Why we're driving cars instead of fucking horses. Riding horses. Riding horse, you know, yeah. Why was that the, uh, the obvious answer? Yeah. You know? Why, why are, are we... Not, uh, why does why? no one have landlines anymore? Exactly, you know? right? And why can, why can I get a cell phone service in the bumfuck nowhere because 5g or some shit i don't know because you don't have t-mobile <laughs> <laughs> hey man there goes our t-mobile sponsorship i mean i get fucked i guess <laughs> <laughs> as a as a customer of t-mobile fuck you okay so uh, <laughs> enough hating on t-mobile i'm just i'm just shooting the shit but 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 seriously <laughs> but seriously you, you, you and things are accessible now, so you should take advantage of that. Right. I I like to, you know, obviously don't like overexert yourself, but take advantage of the fact that things are really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Things are really easy to come by. Things are really easy to access. What's happening over there in the East Sack? It's so easy to see. Right. Before we would, what? Before we, it would be on the newspaper. It would be on the news. It would be on articles and blogs. It would be on... Uh, even it would be on radio, you know, and that's how people would get their information, right? About what's happening over there. Us, Zach, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and it's just there. It's just chilling. It's just like I'll I'll be scrolling and I'd be seeing my my waifus and my and my my fellow cod editors and 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 other very spicy things that happen to pertain. Uh, Japanese anime girls and then I see a video of what's happening over there and I'm like what the how is this even here on my feed I didn't even look for it it's just there and now I have this information right <gasps> but you have to be careful yeah, he be said but with great power comes great responsibility right of knowing your way around the internet. Right. Because, as we said in another podcast, guy with an afternoon can just edit a, a video and say, this is what happened over there. And then it gets 100K retweets and everybody's singing, everybody's talking about it. And this guy's having a laugh. You know? Yeah. It's very easy. I could do it if I wanted to. Obviously, I'm not going to. But I'm not a fucking asshole. But I'm a loser who has nothing to do with their life and they should touch grass. Talk to a girl or a boy, either or. Eat dirt. Um, yeah, I, I mean, trying to make sure that the information that you're gathering and ingesting into your noggin is accurate or as accurate as possible is really important. Mm -hmm. And and that just takes internet knowledge. Yeah. There's no set rule. I took a class that was supposed to teach you it, but you just you just have to know. If you don't know, then you just don't know. 
If you know, they're then you just do like, know. well, I mean, you know, the, 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 these are places where things might be accurate. Other than that, <laughs> you're fucking you're on your own. Well, dude. the class was the, the course was supposed to teach us like fact checking and all that type of stuff. And it is a good skill. And I had used a lot of the techniques to this time uh, to this day. Thank you. Um, but. I still know more just because I'm on the Internet. Right. Because I understand these things. I mean, you see all the time, like old, older, the older generation getting hit and spam called and falling for them and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's just like there's absolutely no there's no protection unless they are somehow into this type of thing. Then there's just no way they know they can watch videos or tutorials or be taught of what it means and they can be more cautious. But it's they're you know, these days are really good at it. As far as the um or the the, uh, the the scammers that is, and the the fake the fake content, not even I'm not even talking about scams at this point. I'm just talking about fake content, fake news, fake tweets, fake anything, right? Right. Anything can be fake. There is no citation to a damn tweet. Work cited. There's no there's none of that, Zach. Yeah. It's just a guy with five minutes and 240 characters. My beard could be fake. It could be. I can be editing it this entire time. I would kill myself if I was, but I could do it and I would not be happy, but I can do it. <laughs> All I need is cinema 4D and it can happen. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it's like you're, by the way, um, I just need After Effects to not crash and I'll be chilling. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. <lol. laughs> oh my God. Lol. Uh, being very cautious about how much you take things at face value yes because a lot of times there's a, a reason other than for the greater good that that people are posting things online and mm -hmm. especially when it comes to news when it comes to things that are important um you know we say that we're not going to talk about politics but that's what happens in politics it's yeah. very opinionated and and personal and mm -hmm. You know, regardless of where you stand on on political views and everything like that, you know, the the mainstream media makes it really hard for you to know what the hell's actually going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like you said, just be cautious and make sure that, you know, you're you're doing your due diligence and, and you know, making sure that you're not just going for the headlines and being like, oh, whoa. Will Smith killed Chris Rock? Um, <laughs> no. Um, I don't think so. No, that'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that would be bad. But anyways, yeah, it, it's cool being in an age where you have access to so much information. But now it's it's different from... It, it used to be not being able to access enough information. And now we have access to too much information mm -hmm. to where we have to make sure that it's true right so that's a weird spot that we're that we have to battle in in our in our day and age and whatever the hell but it's cool man it's cool having having curiosity about how things work and why mm -hmm. things the way that they are and having the opportunity to learn those things i agree and i guess that's really it for this episode, uh, for this episode, yeah, I mean, you know, same old shit. Like, subscribe. We have links down below that work most of the time. Um, you know, we have coffee, Patreon. Sometimes uh, we have our socials. Uh, if you want to check out what we're doing in our free time, mm -hmm. um, let us know. Hit us up. Talk about anime. Talk about music. Yeah. Hit talk us. about. Anime music? <laughs> Talk about music anime? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. Hit us up. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you very soon in the next episode. In the next episode of the Uneducation Station. Goodbye. Peace out.